Hello everybody, welcome to another Chem Complete lecture. And today I want to address how we handle looking at organic acids along with their conjugate bases in predicting which side of a reaction may be favored in an acid base equilibrium. And we can really do that by understanding the pKa values. So this is going to be a lecture that is kind of tabled in reference to organic chemistry and organic acids by and large. So that's what is going to be coming up on the channel right now. All right, before we get started, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that subscribe button, if you are not currently subscribed, you can get up to date with all the new content that's being released and dropping a like if you felt this video was useful will always help get our content out to other people while they're trying to study and learn. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing that I want to bring up is that when we start talking about pKa, pKa derives from Ka, which is the equilibrium constant for an acid that is attempting to dissociate. So this is really a general chemistry concept more than organic chemistry, but it carries over when we start talking about pKa values in the organic chemistry course. So Ka is really just a representation of the equilibrium constant for a general reaction where you have some acid usually the acid is aqueous but that's not always the case especially when we get to organic chemistry and it's in equilibrium with its conjugate base which we'll usually represent as a minus plus the hydronium ion which is water picking up any acidic protons that are released by that generic HA acid. And so by the rules or the laws of equilibrium, we say it's the concentration of products over reactants. And so we can generally express this as the concentration of the conjugate base times the concentration of the hydronium ion is going to be in ratio with or over the concentration of the acid and the water drops out because we don't do liquids or solids in our equilibrium expressions. So what I really want to point out here is that this H3O plus this is the acidity that's where you're getting your actual acid content from it's the amount of hydronium or H plus that is in the free solution. And so as this number increases the concentration of H3O plus okay so we can express this as as H3O plus concentration increases then Ka will also increase right that's just a mathematical relationship that says hey the more this goes up in the numerator the higher the Ka value goes. And so Ka's that have a very large value are going to be considered acidic, right? Any compound that has a large Ka is going to be considered acidic because most of it is on this side of the equilibrium that has dissociated into the actual acidic content, that hydronium ion in solution. Okay, so if you understand that, the next thing is how do we get to pKa? So similar to pH, the pKa is obtained by going through a negative log transformation of the Ka. So if you take the negative log of the Ka, you'll end up with the pKa. Now when you do this, it becomes an inverse relationship as far as the logarithmic transformation goes. And so what that means is that as the Ka has increased or acidity has gone up, the pKa will decrease. So what that means is that a low pKa is going to equal high acidity, okay, or stronger acid. So when we start looking at pKa's, the lower the pKa is, that is your stronger acid, okay, and stronger acids are going to be able to dissociate better into this form. Now, we can put this in the context outside of water when we get to organic chemistry, and we can start looking at organic acids and bases. And so what will usually be taught in first semester organic chemistry is you start taking a look at some simple organic acids and bases and predicting which side of the reaction is going to predominate or which side would be favored in a chemical equilibrium. So here's an example. Here is a protonated amine, it would be ethyl amine, okay, positive cation on the nitrogen, and we can expose that to water. 
and that will be in a relationship with the following conjugate forms. So you can get the conjugate base as just a regular amine. It gives off the additional proton. Water picks up that proton and becomes the hydronium ion, which is H3O+. So when we take a look at this, what we want to really evaluate is the pKa values for both of the acids. So it turns out that the protonated ethyl amine here has a pKa of around 10.6. So we'll mark these down for our reference. Okay, 10.6. And the hydronium ion has a pKa that is equal to negative 1.7. So keep in mind you can go negative on the pKa scale. Once you're dipping down into the negative region, it usually means you have a very strong acid because the lower it goes, the stronger the acid. So what will be common in many organic chemistry uh, chapters at the beginning of the course, they'll set up a reaction like this and it will say something along the lines of uh, which side of the equilibrium will be favored, okay? And the way that you figure this out or you address this is by an understanding of acidity. And what we know from what we just went over is that stronger acids, okay, a strong acid has a tendency to go in the opposite direction and generate its H+, right? So in other words, with this setup up here, we're looking at H3O+, giving an H+, back this way, and becoming H2O, or we can look at the protonated amine giving off an H+, in this direction, and going over to the neutral amine as its conjugate base. So the question is which one of these is going to drive the reaction and the answer here is always going to be that the stronger acid will win out in driving the reaction in the direction that is away from that acid, right? So in other words, H3O+, plus, the hydronium ion, is far better at sending out protons into solution than the protonated amine is. And you can look at that with a relative factor. So if this is 11 and this is almost negative one, you're looking at a relative difference of somewhere on the order of 10 to the 12th. And that is a very, very large, you're talking at that point headed up to a trillion times more acidic when you're looking at something like that. So for every relatively speaking, if we're looking at ratios, that's saying for every one proton that the protonated amine can send off in the right-hand direction, the hydronium ion could fire off approximately a trillion protons in that same time period back this way. So obviously, in a case like that, this is going to be the major form that the reaction will take or the side that will be favored because this is so effective at generating protons or giving them off. It is the left-hand direction or these reactants that are shown over here that would be favored in this situation. Okay, so just to give you another example here, if we turn around and this time we'll use a protonated nitrile okay so nitrile is a type of functional group with the c triple bond n there is a lone pair on that nitrogen so it can pick up a hydrogen and become positively charged and then we'll stick with water okay so going over to the other side here what you would end up with is just the acetonitrile conjugate lone pair on that nitrogen and then you would also have the hydronium so when we take a look at this we already know the hydronium is going to be negative 1.7 in its pKa and then when we take a look at the protonated nitrile it has a pKa of negative 10.1 so this is far more acidic than the hydronium. So last time the hydronium was a stronger acid, pushing things to the left. This time it is going to be the right-hand side that will be favored or dominate the equilibrium. And that's because this protonated acetonitrile is so much stronger as an acid in comparison to the hydronium that it pushes everything over to the right and the products end up being favored. Okay, so we'll go through one more example, but hopefully you're catching on to the general premise here. So now, let's take a look at methanol, 
And instead of working with water, let's go ahead and use a hydride ion. So this is a rare instance where hydrogen takes on a negative charge and has a lone pair there. Very commonly coupled with alkali metals like sodium hydride. Okay, and what will result is what is called the alkoxide ion, which is an alkyl ion with an oxygen, plus that methoxide is going to have H2 generated. Now the pKa's here, okay, this is most definitely going to act as a base and pull the excess hydrogen off to create H2. And so the pKa of methanol is equal to 16. And the pKa of hydrogen gas is equal to 36. So what you should do, I'll give you one second, pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. You should, probably should be able to based on what we talked about. Okay, so hopefully you've come back and you've realized here, or you could keep up as we were going along, that of these two, the pKa of 36 is much weaker compared to the pKa of 16, about 20 times. So now you're talking about astronomically going to be favored on the right-hand side of this equilibrium. Okay, so this is by far a stronger acid in comparison to hydrogen gas. And so that means that this side, the weaker side, will be favored, and this will make a very big push towards that side. Okay, so that about does it. If you found that this video was useful and helpful, I would encourage you again to leave a thumbs up. You can subscribe as we're pushing out new content on a regular basis to help you with your studies. If you don't mind, head on over to chemcomplete.com. You can check out all the various resources we have there. Many of them are free resources. We also have ways you can support the channel by buying guides, things like how to pass organic chemistry. They are essentially eBooks that I've written. And other than that, if you leave a comment, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you as always for learning with me today, and I will see you guys in the next lecture. Take care, everybody.